Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 529. Why do women need estrogen? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today's a very special day for our HealthCast. We have over 500 HealthCasts that uh, Brett Newcomb and I have done together. And now I'm going out on my own and Brett is retiring. So I want to thank him for all the years that he has put up with me and that we've been writing together, writing our books, The Secret Female Hormone, and writing the uh, book, I've Got Testosterone. So, Got Testosterone, excuse me. And um, all the time that we spent together, thank you for um, all the work that you've done. Well, thank and you. We'll miss you, and all of my patients and listeners have already expressed their sadness. Well, they're, they're, they just don't think it'll be the same without you, and it probably won't. But, but we'll. But I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you always do. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. It's been an exciting time in my life and a, a time that I think that we've accomplished some really good work. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been a joy, every bit of it. Thank you. So now we're going to talk about the question that my patients always ask me. I, I just don't get it. Why, why do I need estrogen? I just, do, don't I just need testosterone? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard so many bad things about estrogen. I, why do I need it? And estrogen is really important. It is so important. And it's, and when I was reading a study recently, um, I had some old research articles that I hadn't gone through, and I'm going through them. And I find this research article from uh, 2017, and it was about how women, uh, the women that have the worst hot flashes, meaning the worst, the lowest estrogen levels after menopause, have the worst risk for heart disease. They are the high, they're the highest risk to get a heart attack, highest risk to get a stroke uh, because they don't have estrogen. Postmenopausal. Postmenopausal women. Yes. So this is something that is is very important and no one really talks so, about. So that represents a change because before they're postmenopausal, women have generally mm -hmm. le a significantly lesser risk than men of having mm -hmm. heart disease. Yes. So something switches when they go through menopause. Right. And, and then and the switch is they stop or they begin to lose their estrogen. They stop and, making estrogen. And they don't replace it. Right. And, and if, if it's not replaced, right. then they get many symptoms of low estrogen, like hot flashes, like moodiness, weight gain, uh, insulin resistance, prediabetes. They also have... Um, a dry vagina, painful intercourse, uh, bladder instability, so they have urine loss. Uh, many people have more prolapse of the uterus that causes them to have hysterectomies because they don't have estrogen. But I want to talk first, we'll talk about the other things, but I want to first talk about what estrogen does for us. Because when we're young, estrogen actually keeps us from collecting plaque on our blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And it makes our blood vessels dilate better when we're exercising, when we're hot, when we uh, are having sex, we need to have our vessels dilate just like men do. Right. And so estrogen accomplishes that. So that's one of the many things that makes it protect us from heart disease. Men don't have much estrogen. They have a little, but not enough to protect them. And so their risk goes up with age. As they get older, men just increase their risk of of heart disease. So we catch up, you know, we have low risk and then all of a sudden we get menopause and the estrogen's gone and all of a sudden we catch up to them. And mm -hmm. so then our risk is the same as men. So the key here and what they were trying to describe in this research article was that women who, 
when women have hot flashes, that's a sign that their body's screaming at them to get some estrogen. Basically, it's a sign that something has to be done. Hot flashes disturb your sleep, they, but they're a sign that you don't have any estrogen. So because of that, hot flashes are related to heart disease. The more hot flashes you have, the worse your risk for heart disease is. And that's what they proved in this research, that that was the case. So after menopause... So it's a more significant signal to the woman. The more severe her hot flashes are, the more it should say, warning, check out your heart situation. Right. And, and for many years, we have been told... Never heard that. A lie. Yeah. <laughs> the, lie the lie that we don't need estrogen. And partial, part of that is that people didn't really read the WHI study. They didn't really... They just heard the headline, and do even doctors didn't read it, and they right. just said, oh, well, estrogen's bad. We aren't doing that anymore. It made their lives easier. Right. They didn't have to give anybody, any of us estrogen. They didn't have to listen to us have postmenopausal bleeding. But they're not the ones who are feeling terrible and having hot flashes all night, not sleeping, being tired, being ineffectual. Some of us who have those can't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come to me and they're like, I, I, I can't do anything anymore. I have to quit my job wow. because I am so tired from hot flashes all the time. Or executive women come in and say, I'm standing in front of, in front of a whole group of men and I start sweating and I start, my face so turns red. So it does just happen at night when no. a woman's trying to sleep. I mean, it can happen at any time. At night, often it's worse because... It comes from a pulse of FSH and LH, the two hormones that when we were young, it made our ovaries work and made us have cycles and gave us fertility. So it was those FSH and LH are used to managing an ovary and managing the estrogen. There's a feedback system for all hormones. And so your pituitary puts out FSH and LH. Mm -hmm. It then goes into your bloodstream, goes to the ovaries, and it says, make estrogen, or make progesterone, or make testosterone. So FSH is mostly the stimulant for estradiol. So estrogen is then made when it gets FSH, then the ovary makes estrogen. When, you go, when women go through menopause, unlike men, our ovaries just die. They do very little of anything. They make very little hormone at all. Your brain doesn't know that. The only message your brain gets is, there's not enough estrogen. So the FSH goes up higher and higher and higher, trying to get that ovary that is asleep, I guess we'll call it, uh, to work. And it's not coming back. Ovaries do not come back. They just shrivel up. And my experience with surgery is when you, you operate on somebody to do a hysterectomy or you look inside the pelvis and there are these little teeny tiny little almond size scarred pieces of tissue that used to be ovaries that were nice and round and, and look like a kind of a small egg. So they look, they literally look like they're not doing anything and they're not. So the FSH and LH go up and every time you surge, your FSH makes, hits your, your heat center and you start sweating, you get hot. And then after that, you get freezing cold because it goes away. So it's, it's kind of like wet. hitting a fire alarm, and it goes to the fire alarm, goes to the brain, and it sends out the fire department, which is the the hormones mm -hmm. that the FSH. H. Mm -hmm. And when they get, I mean, they run around in the system, and they don't have any place to go. Mm -hmm. So then the system overheats, right. and you have this. It, it's almost like when your fever breaks, and that's you what get happens. Soaking but it happens wet. hundreds of times a day. Wow. And so. So what it kind of looks like for your neurotransmitters inside your brain is, is like an earthquake. So when FSH surges, and it, it makes all the other neurotransmitters off balance. So people get depressed, they get anxious, they get anxiety attacks. Besides just being embarrassed and sweating and not being able to sleep and being exhausted, now you're, now you're trying to figure out what you can wear so that nobody knows that, that you're soaking you're wet inside, yeah, and no, and so that you don't feel cold later, and it it's it is a I, I mean it's a terrible feeling. I mean it's and it is not managed with anything. I don't care what herb you take, and I don't care if you take antidepressants, which people give to women yeah. for hot flashes. The only real treatment 
the most natural treatment is to give a woman back some estrogen and enough to shut down her hot flashes. So you keep saying the word estrogen. The system makes two kinds of Mm -hmm. estrogen. And does the FSH trigger both kinds? No. FSH triggers estradiol, which comes from the ovary. Um, Estrone, which is old lady estrogen, comes from the adrenal gland, and it's triggered by low testosterone. Okay. Okay, so we do get more estrone when we become menopausal because we don't make testosterone either. So the estrone goes up while the estradiol goes down, but it does not affect your your, uh, FSH. So you would replace testosterone to... Take care of the estrone, mm-hmm. and you replace to lower uh, the estrone to lower it, and and you replace estrogen to estradiol. provide estradiol, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that balance then prevents the hot flashes, and but it just it the estradiol protects for heart protects the heart and helps the hot flashes. The estrone is has a different activity; it makes us addled. We can't think. I mean, it's not a good estrogen. It makes us fat. It makes our our. Uh, it's, it's the estrogen that makes your breasts hurt and grow. And, I mean, when you're past menopause, it's not grow and get perky. It's grow and get long and not attractive. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not a good thing. Estrone isn't good for you. You should have a tiny bit of it, but you should not have more estrone than estradiol. And that's what happens. The ratio between estradiol, the young woman's estrogen, and estrone does this instead of what you had when you were young. And it was... It was three times or twice as high estradiol. Estrone was That's what happened to my chest as I got older. It went to my stomach. Yeah. It just yeah. fell. Uh-huh. And well. your work, your replacement of hormones for me has helped me remove that so yeah. that I don't mm-hmm. have that anymore. Right. And, and, it re- and you don't have man boobs, but some men come to me with man boobs, yeah. and, and that's estrone. And, and so we give them something to, uh, to shut down the production of estrone so that they don't have man boobs anymore. They don't have to have surgery. Surgery is actually not indicated for that. But so uh, there, are, there are different ways to give mm-hmm. a woman estrogen. Mm-hmm. You can give it to her orally mm-hmm. uh, as a tablet or a pill. Mm-hmm. And how does that work? Is that good enough? So um, for years, that's all we had. That's what when I was training in the '80s. That's all we had was um, oral estrogen. It was mostly Premarin, and that's from pregnant mare's urine. Which I chose not to use. I tried to use anything else but that because pregnant mare's urine means that they kill the baby horses so that they can make the mare, the mare, the horse, pregnant again. Hmm. I just can't do that. I can't, I can't back that, that kind of estrogen because of how they make it. I mean, plus, who wants urine? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not taking that. So I've never, I've never taken that, and I rarely wrote it unless somebody came in and said, it's the only thing I've ever tried. This is way back when. I don't write it now. That, I, that's the only thing I tried it, that's worked, and I have no idea why it worked. There's didn't make sense because the estrogens in, for horses, there's like 17 estrogens in there. Oh, wow. And they're all different than ours. And so I don't know why that would work. However, what happens when you take a pill of any kind of estrogen is that as you swallow it, it is actually broken down by the liver before it does anything for you. It goes into your liver. It's called the first pass effect. That means the medication or the food goes directly to your liver and becomes other things. So when you swallow estrogen of any kind, it actually is broken down into estrone. You make more estrone and you make more... Less estradiol, and you don't you don't get it, the dose that you were really given that you were because really most of it converts to estrone because it goes to estrone. Right. And then you get belly fat, long breasts, and and you don't feel good. It stops hot flashes because you have enough estradiol, but it doesn't. It gives you all those bad side effects. Yeah, and that and the worst thing about oral estrogen of any kind is that. It increases your risk of clotting. If you have a clotting problem genetically, then it's going to increase your risk for clotting. No other treatment delivery system of estrogen increases clotting, only oral. And that's because the estrone's so high. So that's very similar to other critical issues in medicine. When, when you are prescribed 
medicine from a symptomatic approach. We're going to try to treat this particular symptom. Mm -hmm. It often comes with side effects mm -hmm. that create other problems down mm -hmm. the road. Yeah, that's true. And so the oral estrogen creates other side effects mm -hmm. from the estrone. Mm -hmm. It does. And you don't get enough. I mean, you get enough estradiol to stop the hot flashes, but you don't get enough to do the other things you need to do. There's a In our notes that you put mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. you identified estradiol depletion. So a woman that doesn't have enough estradiol, which is the young, vibrant, healthy mm -hmm. estrogen, estrogen yeah. that the depletion of that causes prediabetes and insulin resistance, atrophy of the vagina and the vulva, making sex impossible, the drying up of sweat glands in the groin and vagina, drying up lubrication, drying and wrinkling of skin, frontal hair loss, sagging skin, and increases the risk of brain shrinkage, causing dementias. Right. Now, that's a hell of a load. Right, of negative that's, things. Those, that's what happens if you don't take estro estrogens. I mean, any estrogens. So that would be diminished a little bit by oral, but in general, the side effects are, t are too bad. So you need a patch or you need a, a compounded vaginal estrogen or sublingual under the tongue estrogen. But the best estrogen with the fewest side effects and the, that completely brings you back to normal and me back to normal, it, and my patients, is pellet estradiol. Because we just, we put a pellet in, it lasts four months. I don't have to worry about whether you take it or not. I don't have to worry about whether the patch falls off and you start getting hot flashes, but you didn't notice the patch came off and you think there's something wrong wrong with your dose. Right, right. Um, I don't have to worry about anything because I put them in, or my nurse practitioners put it in, and I know they're going to last four months, so you're okay. So you put them in at the same time that you do the testosterone pellets. Mm -hmm. So they're, mm -hmm. they're two separate pellets, right. one of testosterone, one, one of, of estrogen. Estradiol. So, so that way I can change the dose on the testosterone and maybe not the estrogen or vice versa. So how do you determine how much a woman needs? Is there, there a standard amount? Well, that, that's, that's interesting. I mean, the, you know, the average woman is – there is no average woman. There's not one size fits all. Right. So if I have somebody who um, is 150 pounds, average height, not really, a little overweight, not too overweight, you know, in general, four months worth of estradiol would be 25 milligrams. Now, if they, there's things that make them need more estrogen and there's things that make them need less. If they don't have any symptoms, like say they just have hot flashes, they don't have a dry vagina. They don't have painful intercourse. They don't have any of these other symptoms. Right. To me, that says they only need a little bit of estrogen. They don't need as much as possibly somebody else who has all the symptoms. So I might drop the dose to 20. Or if they are six feet tall and weigh, and weigh 250, right. I'm going to go up to 37.5. Yeah. And that 37.5 will last for the four months for somebody who has a bigger surface area. Um, there are other things, there are genetic things that we don't test and are hard to test. A, um, inability to break down estrogens changes everything. It just just keeps circulating and, and I don't have to give them anything. Usually if I give them a tiny bit once a year, it's that's it. That's all they need. So there's a lot of things to be looked at here. Yeah. It's not one size fits all, which is how I was trained. Here, give them some 0 0.625 Premarin every day and it'll be okay. Well... That's that's okay if you've had a hysterectomy, but if you but, but that's been a chronic issue for women in medicine. Period. <laughs> I mean, they don't set normals on women. They have not historically done mm -hmm. so. They're doing that more now. Mm -hmm. But for the longest time, they wouldn't allow women to be in test populations, mm -hmm. and so they basically the opinion was a woman's just like a man, but doesn't have a penis, and so we'll give her the same medicine, and maybe because her average size and weight is smaller, we'll cut it by a factor. But they don't even cut it. I mean, if you look at blood pressure medicines, it's one size fits all, man and woman. There's no distinction between them. Uh, statins, every every drug that is not a hormone or specifically for a problem that a woman has is one size fits all. And so are the labs. And the labs are quite different. The lab normal should be changed for women and men in many of the areas like like thyroid and lipids. And I mean, there are, there are normals that are different for men and women, but they're not on your lab sheet. So there are a lot of things that are not made for us. They're made for men. And we have to fit into them. But estrogen's not that. Estrogen right. isn't that. And, you know, the way I was trained, there were like six doses, or no, four doses of, es of Premarin. Mm -hmm. So if that's so you it, got one of those. You, you never check blood work. Yeah. 
if they had hot flashes, you gave them that. If that didn't work, you gave them more. If that didn't work, you gave them more. And if that didn't work, you were done because the FDA didn't approve a higher dose. So they just had to live with it. So so that was that's how I was trained. Yeah. Which means and that's how most doctors are trained now. I mean, that's forty years ago. So but but so the one thing we haven't mentioned in this conversation and I think we should mention is the, the women's health initiative stopped. They were doing investigations into breast cancers, Mm -hmm. and they found a significant number early in the study, and they said, oh, my God, now we know, and they canceled the study. And then doctors and women all over America quit doing hormone replacement, which had become a very common practice, widely understood for aging women. You're going to need to do this with with estrogen, uh, not so much testosterone. don't walk away now because I don't want you to think that that's true because what happened was they had – a part of the study that was just women who, with hysterectomies who had were just estrogen. They were right. just given estrogen pills. And then they had a part of the study that was estrogen and Provera, which is like progesterone, but not really progesterone. It's a progestin. And the part of the study that had Provera actually was the only part of the study where breast cancer went up. Right. And where heart disease went up. But the part of the study in the women that just took estrogen, yeah. that the heart disease went down, the breast cancer uh, rate was lower than people who took nothing. Yeah. So they reacted to the wrong drug. I'm not sure why. It made no sense. But they should have said, nobody should take Pro- Provera. I mean... That's what should have happened. Yeah. Maybe we need a different kind of of progesterone, pure progesterone, to balance this estrogen. Right. And 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 we figured out that that does work. You can take pure. So you progesterone. don't need to be afraid of breast cancer if you replace your estrogen. No, and and you should be afraid of having a heart heart attack if you don't. If you don't. And Alzheimer's because yeah. Alzheimer's and de- dementia is much more prevalent in people who don't take estrogen. Okay. And that's a very scary future. So your safest bet is taking a non-oral estrogen and taking a natural progesterone, not Provera, not Progestin, not Agestin. Those are all bad. And then staying on those. But if you have a, if you have a choice and you have someone who provides pellets in your area, hormone pellets are actually the safest. And if you add testosterone to it, you even lower your chance of dementia even more. And your health. Your health is generally better uh, across the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and your sex life is better, so. Which has, has to do with <laughs> good had, health. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.